Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Fabio Wardley. Fabio, it's actually a big day for you tonight because you're you're going to Portman Road to face off of Fraser Clark. So first of all, how excited are you for that? Yeah, buzzing, buzzing for that. Um, obviously, love that going down the club and love love being down Portman Road anyway. But then to to be there to to kind of build the fight as well and add a bit more to it and kind of bring boxing to as a taste up, but bring a little bit of boxing to Portman Road is, um, is yeah, it's fantastic. Something I'm buzzing about. How realistic is it to say over the next maybe 18, 24 months that you will fight at Portman Road? Very realistic. Yeah, very realistic. I think you got a good kind of 70, 80%. Um, I think as long as, as long as timing and things all come together well, obviously the, only, the big difficulty with stadium shows is obviously not affecting the pitch too much. But, yeah. It affects the team when they're playing and things like that. So more so you have to do it when they're out of season. But as long as that in terms of timing, the right opponent and things come together, um, obviously I want to make sure it's a good fight. I don't want it to be anything just Mickey Mouse, just doing it for the sake of doing it. So as long as all those things pair up well, then we should be there. We're all good. But the club are very on board. They want to do it. So it's just about getting the right fight. I'm sure the British public would love to see that as well. And you faced off with Fraser Clark a few weeks ago for the first time after this fight was announced. What did you see in Fraser Clark that day when you did face off and when you had the press conference? <laughs> um, nothing too much. Nothing too much I didn't already know was there. Um, saw a little bit of aggravation, a little bit of frustration when I was poking and prodding a few times, a little bit things annoyed him. A few things I did, a few things I said, but that's all fun and games. It's all part of it. I try not to read too much into things like that and, and bits like that of all... Oh, in the stare down, like he looked away first, and all that crap. Like I don't really, I don't really think it's got much worth in it. Um, the only thing that really matters is on the night and how things pan out. I'll ask you a question that probably you wouldn't expect me to ask you first, but what does Fraser Clark do well inside the ring, in your opinion? Um, you can't take away that he's he's a good all round boxer. I think that's the the best way to kind of describe him he does a lot of things pretty well um but he's not exceptional in any area for me he's not really quick he's not really strong he's not really powerful he's there's nothing there that i'm really like okay that's a key point for him he does he does some things really good don't get me wrong he, he boxes well he pushes punches together well and bits like that but there's nowhere where he really excels um and i think there's some obvious areas in myself where i, I am I do really double down and you can see that are key points of my my game. So having to battle through them is, is going to be the hard point for him. What weaknesses do you believe you can exploit on the 31st of March? Um, I think the occasion itself. I think the pressure of the occasion is definitely going to be something I'll be, I'll be looking to apply to him and, and just put him in them uncomfortable situations and, and making him sit there and feel like, actually, you know what, I don't do this i don't want to be here i don't want to be in the middle of this it's it's all a bit much i think that's the key area for me i think the clear one that everyone's seen as well is that he's got stamina problems he's not got the best gas tank it's not it's he's not really he doesn't fight a particularly high pace there's nothing there really too too really draining about fighting him if you want if you wanted to keep it comfortable and fight his pace he's more than happy to let you do that so um i think that's an obvious area as well in terms of you and him, I would say he's got obviously much more amateur pedigree than you, more amateur experience. But on the pro scene, you, you've more double his fights, basically. Do you believe that your experience inside the pro the pro game will stand you in good stead in this fight against Fraser Clark? Yeah, massively. Massively, because ultimately that's where it matters. And I know a lot of a lot of talk has been said about his amateur record and things like that, but that also is in the past. It's a good, what, two or three years ago now? So... Is he the same Fraser Clark he even was back then? Who knows? Maybe he's not as he's not as quick. He's not as sharp. He's, everything's not ticking all the same. Like a lot of those years in the amateurs and things like that, and hard sparring with the likes of AJ Joyce and them guys and all of that, it takes its toll on you. It's wear and tear on the body. So is he? Mate, don't get me wrong. He, he peaked definitely in the amateurs and, and got his bronze medal and whatever else. But was that really his peak? And now is he on the decline? That's the question. You had a, a great win against David Adelaide last time out. A lot of people maybe doubted you coming into that one. Fabio, do you believe that you learnt a lot that night against David? Um, 
Yeah, I think especially with I don't know if necessarily I learned a lot. I think I'm also I was able to show show other areas of my game that maybe people didn't think they were there or didn't think I could do. Um box into a plan and boxing properly and and controlling the fight and managing the fight properly in the right ways and things like that. Um ring IQ in there and fit and, and bits. I think those are the areas I really kind of showed as opposed to really learned so much. Um I just kind of want to prove to people that look, yeah, okay, look, I know I can, I can bite down, I can get stuck in, but if I really want to box clean and concise, then I can do that as well. I want to ask you a question that maybe a lot of people struggle to get an answer for. What is Ben Davison's actual involvement with you? <laughs> he's a he's he's a coach. He's on he's like he's a full on coach for me as well. So they work in between Robert Hodgins and Ben Davison. They work in unison. They work together. So it's it's. Two brains instead of one, basically. Um, so there's no, we keep it as a as a three and as a trio. Really, we're not. There's no kind of pecking order of one says above the other or anything. We're working. We're all three of us are working in conjunction. We're working together. We're all trying to. Um, we're all trying to like get better, but work towards the same goal. Everyone's on the same page. So when I'm training with Ben, my coach Rob's right there with me as well. So we're all cute questioning between each other. Does this work? Does this fit? And we come to a mutual plan between all of us. So it's a level playing field, but he's a he's as full on my coaching team as my original coach is Ben as well. So they're, they're all, all on the same line. Do you also have Lee Wiley involved looking at the analyst type of thing as well? Yeah, they're kind of a package deal really. If you get Ben, you get Lee. So um I've got the benefit of of Lee the Wizard Wiley in there as well, and he's he's breaking things down and and giving me key bits of information for me to work on, and that obviously helps massively with my development and IQ and and getting me to analyze fights better as well. Has it benefited you having Anthony Joshua in the gym then, when you have been training, and do you believe that you've you've taken parts of his game as well in this camp? Uh, probably no, not so much because I'm not really around him too much. Um, Ben likes to make sure that everyone's got their own their own individual time. You're working on your own individual game. So there are overlapping times where we'll see each other and we'll kind of we'll be around each other for a bit and stuff. But there's no we're not training like shoulder to shoulder, side by side, because we're all got we're all in different places in our career, we're all working on different things and we've all got different goals to work on. So Ben's very he's very clear on those things that he wants you to be focused on your goal and not distracted by anything else or, or, or staying on point. AJ Ngannou is this week. How do you believe that goes in your opinion, Fabio? I think AJ wins. Um, I wouldn't. I, I don't want to be disrespectful and saying comfortably because I wouldn't like to say that disrespectfully to Ngannou. But I think you've seen, especially from the last fight with AJ, he's very, he's very confident in his work, and like we've seen him have been in the past, kind of past few fights and things. So he's he's feeling good about he's feeling good about himself and feeling good about boxing at the moment. So he's ready to really kind of use this fight to make a statement, not to say like I'm back, like he's been missing, but I know a lot of people have been calling to kind of say like, where's the old AJ and bits like that. So I think he's kind of using this fight to be like, look, I'm going to put on a performance. You got to see a little glimpse of it last time out, but this time you'll really see kind of the full extent. He's had a lot more time to work with Ben and stuff and hone his skills. So they'll all come together, I think on, on fight night. Do you believe he knocks? In Ghana yet? It's hard to say. He's definitely got the power to do it. He can, if the opportunity arises, I don't think he'd shy away from it at all. He'll definitely take advantage of it. But Ngannou is a very tough man, a very tough man. And also a man who's used to taking elbows and knees as opposed to padded punches. So we'll see. We'll see. You, you've you shared the ring with Fury, Usyk, AJ and Sparn. Who hits the hardest? That's always a tricky question, that one, because it's... It's almost unfair because I've like I've sparred maybe six rounds with like Fury and then I've done like fifteen or so with AJ and then with Usyk, I don't know how many I've done. So whoever hits the hardest the one that hit me the hardest out of all of those would have been AJ. But then if I'd have maybe sparred Fury a few more rounds, maybe it'd have hit me harder. Like it's always a hard one that one, but objectively off off those few rounds that I did with them, he was the one that hit me the hardest. With Fury Usyk coming up and having shared the ring with both of them, how do you believe that one goes? Uh, I'm still edging towards Usyk at the moment. 
I still, I, I'm still, I don't get me wrong, I'm still very much on the fence with it as well. It's, it's such a difficult one for me, but I still think that at this moment of their careers and their mindset towards boxing and, and just being in the zone of it all, I think Usyk is more switched on for that, right, as it stands. With this week, Dillian White, your your manager cleared, going to come back to the ring. Who would you like to see him face? Maybe Anthony Joshua after an Ngannou win? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a good one. Um, I don't know. I, all I ever know with Dill is that he's, he's happy to just bring bring violence to anyone's door. Whoever whoever wants it can get it. So it would just be good to see him back in the ring, see him back in boxing, see him back in the thick of it. How beneficial is it for you to have someone like Dillian White guiding your career as well? Yeah, it's been it's been crucial to my career um, to have someone like him backing me, pointing me in the right direction. Anyone there for any questions I have and things like that, and just just someone to turn to and look to and say, "Yo, I'm, I'm in this predicament. How do I go about this?" Or training at the moment's working out like this. What do I do with that? Or this isn't happening. That's not happening. And he's always there and always on hand. And he's been seen and done it all as well. So he's got all the right answers. Last one from me. Your fight coming up only, what, three weeks away? 31st of March against Fraser Clark. How does it end, Fabio? <laughs> Ends like all my other fights with my hand raised and, and Fraser sparked out on the ground. Like I'm, I'm going into it with the same mentality that I've had of all my fights that I need to come out on top that I'm going to get that win and that I'm going to get the knockout as well. Well, Fabio, it's always a pleasure on IFL TV. Hopefully we can catch up again over the next few weeks and we look forward to seeing you against Fraser Clark in that massive British showdown. Really appreciate it, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook. <laughs> 